Today we are going to discuss about design of doubly reinforced section according to the Euro code. In this example, we are going to design the section for bending. When you know the bending moment, shear forces, and section properties like beam height, beam width, etc., we can design a beam. Let's first discuss about the procedure we need to follow. Step by step, I will explain you what are the steps you need to follow when you're designing a beam or similar kind of section for bending. First, you have to calculate the effective depth. That's the first step. You may assume a certain bar diameter for the reinforcement and cover. You may know that depending on the exposure condition, step diameter you may assume. Then with that, you can calculate the effective depth. The second step is to calculate the depth to compression reinforcement bars. This also same procedure you know the uh, cover and then strap diameter you may assume certain diameter for compression reinforcement since this is doubly reinforced section you have to provide the compression reinforcement uh, in this case you assume certain bar diameter then you can proceed with the calculation of depth to the compression bars later you may verify this whether it is corrected or wrong next thing you have to calculate the k k equals m over b d squared f c k so where the bend m is the bending moment b is the beam with d is effective depth and c k is the characteristic cylinder strength not like b s b is standard you record you have to use the cylinder strength that you have to keep in mind then you have to check whether k is greater than k dash where the k dash is equal 0.167 so if this is the case if k is greater than k dash that is 0.617 if k is greater than 0.167 the section is doubly reinforced then you have to use those relevant equations otherwise you have to use the reinforcement equation for single reinforced section then you have to calculate the d dash over d ratio that's because you want to see whether the compression reinforcement are yield that's very important if the reinforcement are not yield the equation won't be applicable you have to manually calculate the uh, the reinforcement area if this reinforcement are not yield so check whether the d dash over d ratio is less than 0.16 if this is satisfied uh, you can consider the reinforcement as yield now this expression was derived considering xod is equal 0.45 further there are other variation various methods to check whether compression rate plus bar yield or not so anyway before doing the calculations in the w reinforced section you have to make sure compression rate reinforcement are yield or not it's very important because you will end up with the wrong answer next you have to calculate the compression reinforcement area so we have given the equation you can follow the same equation this is the equation to calculate the compression reinforcement rate like b b is standard you have a straightforward equation you can substitute the parameters there then you can calculate all those parameters you will know k you know from the calculation previous calculation k dash 167 fck is the cylinder strength b is beam width d is effective depth this if yk is the characteristic yield strength of the reinforcement d you know effective depth d dash is depth to the compression reinforcement bar so you can calculate the compression reinforcement area from this equation then you have to calculate the main reinforcement or the main sagging reinforcement or hogging reinforcement that depend on the section anyway the main reinforcement tension reinforcement for that you have to calculate the leave arm leave arm can be calculated from this equation or else when the xod is considered 0.5 that we know then this value you can calculate is it you can calculate straightforward method also is it equal point is 2d that's that's also you can consider otherwise you can use this equation you know the k so you know the d you can calculate the z anyway you have to check whether the z is less than 0.95 d same as the british standard you have to check that because if it is greater you have to use the z equal 0.95 d that you have to keep in mind you have to make sure to do this check then from this equation you can calculate the main tension tension rate post area a is main tension reinforcement area k dash you know 0.167 previously we discussed fck is the characteristic cylinder strength uh, b is width of the beam d is effect to depth fyk is the characteristic yield strength of the reinforcement d z is the leave arm from the previous calculation a is dash is the compression reinforcement area that we calculated under item 7 so you know all the things you can calculate the main reinforcement area 
in addition to this calculation now you we have calculated the reinforcement area for the compression reinforcement and then tension reinforcement area also we have now calculated. apart from that we have to check some limits that's for minimum reinforcement maximum reinforcement Though all those we have to check. Let's see what the minimum reinforcement requirement. According to the Euro Code 2, we have to consider this requirement as provided shall be greater than 0.26 FCTM divided by FYK. So this equation you can apply here CM divided by FYK into BD. BD also there. But this value will not less than 0 0.0013 BD. This value also we have to meet, not less than this one also. Here FT, FCTM is the tensile strength of the concrete. This can be obtained from the table 321 in the Euro code. This is there as an equation in the Euro code. You can use this equation or there as a table. In this table, this procedure is given to calculate the FCTM. You may refer to the standard there. Then the maximum reinforcement area that there, there is a limit 100 is provided by AC plus than 4. Here A is provided is the tension reinforcement area you provided. A C is the cross-sectional area of the section that should be less than 4. That's the procedure. As we discussed now, we know the procedure to follow when you're designing a double reinforced section according to the Euro code. Let's work with the work example, then you will understand this more than that we discuss. So let's take a work example design data. I have considered height of the beam as 450 in this example, width of the beam 225, cover to the reinforcement 25 mm, bending moment 150 kN, this slash is not that, cylinder strength of the concrete 20 newtons per millimeter square, reinforcement strength 500 newtons per millimeter square. In this case, as we discussed, since we are not aware about the bar diameter, it's the up and all that before the designing, we may assume depending on the section size and depending on your experience since we know the bending moment and all that you can assume a certain diameter for reinforcement area in this example we are concentrating on calculation finding the bending reinforcement area so from the equation given here you can calculate the effective depth how do you calculate effective depth now we have all the parameters now the depth of beam is there 450 we know that this is cover to the reinforcement area that also we know from the data we assume bar diameter as a 20 millimeter if it would have this calculated to the to center of the reinforcement bar or if you have a mini bars that that you have to consider the area center minus 10 that is strap diameter so you get the 405 as the effective depth now we have to calculate the d dash that is depth to the compression reinforcement bar now you know the cover then strap uh, diameter then we assume compression reinforcement bar diameter as 20 millimeter then you have d dash as a 45 millimeter now you can calculate the k what's the k k is equal from this uh, standard m o m divided by b d squared f c k this this is straightforward uh, method you have the equation so you can substitute Easily. You know the bending moment here. Now you have to concentrate attend on the unit. Now other units are in millimeters. B is uh, millimeters, D is millimeters, F C K is also Newton's per millimeter square. So you better convert the bending moment into the same unit. So you have to multiply by 10 to the power 6 to convert kilo newton meter to newton millimeter. Then that's okay. Now here D you know then fck you know now with that you can calculate the k 0 0.0203 now we have to check whether k is greater than k dash as you can see here k dash is 0.167 so k you have calculated definitely it's greater than k dash so therefore the section is doubly reinforced now we have to check whether the reinforcement are yield or not we have to calculate the d dash or d we calculate already these two values parameters or oh, d dash and d so it's 0 0.0111 so it's less than 0 0.171 therefore a compression reinforcement is yield that you have to make sure otherwise you have to use different equation to calculate the compression reinforcement area compression reinforcement area can be calculated from this equations as we discussed previously so we let's substitute the values we obtained to that equation so here the k we have calculated k dash we know fck we know 20 
Now width of the beam effective depth divided by 0.87 into yield strength into the d minus d dash d we know and d dash also we know. With that we can calculate the compression reinforcement area as 170 millimeter square. Now we have calculated the compression reinforcement area. Next step is to calculate the tension reinforcement area. For that we have to calculate the leave arm first. Leave arm as we discussed previously it should be less than or equal 0.95 d when you consider is xod is as 0.45 you may con you can can get the z as 0 0.8 otherwise you may calculate the z z is calculated as 321 332 0.1 millimeters so you know the z now you can calculate the tensions and reinforcement area as we know all other parameters here only the z was missing other things you already know so you can calculate the tension reinforcement area so this k dash is 0.167 then cylinder strength 20 width of the beam 225 effective depth of the beam 405 87 into yield strength 500 then multiplied by z 332.1 plus a s dash this is also compression reinforcement or this also we have already calculated then we can obtain the compression reinforcement area so we know now compression reinforcement area and the tension reinforcement area both we have kept. then we can provide the reinforcement now for bottom reinforcement we have to meet this requirement then you can provide two numbers of 25 mm bars and one 16 mm bars its total area will be 1180 mm square that's greater than required amount then this is okay apart from that we have to calculate the minimum and maximum reinforcement area all those checks need to be done as we discussed previously so as provider shall be greater than 0.26 ftm divided by yk into bd so 0.26 we know tm you have to obtain from the table in the code depending on the grade of the concrete the value you can obtain from the table as we discussed previously so it's 2.2 so it's not that difficult you can refer it in the table it's just straightforward like this you can calculate. you can obtain this value e strength you know 500 b and d we know we have already calculated d then you can obtain the a is as 104.2 millimeter square that is always greater than the provided area 1000 224 millimeter then we have to check whether it's greater than 0 0.013 bd also as we discussed previously that also satisfied we have to substitute b and d from we get 118.5 millimeters so that's also smaller than the we provided area therefore provide the reinforcement area is greater than the minimum required reinforcement area that is our conclusion then we have to check the maximum reinforcement area and also we have to keep in mind we don't didn't cover all the aspects of the reinforcement detailing here we are only concentrating on the bending reinforcement maximum reinforcement area uh, 100 days provided divided by ac less than 4 what's this 100 days is provided you already know 100 days provided what's that value that is you have provided the this much of value there now there is a little error as you can see here those are the things you have to be concentrated when you're doing the design calculations as provided now this is not the one value this is the value as provided is this value no okay you have to consider this value you have to keep in mind you can provide this value of course but you better provide this value this because this is the one you are going to provide because this is a small value always we have to use the high value because we are checking the maximum reinforcement area therefore you have to check and you have to provide, consider the provided reinforcement area for the section so this value should be corrected those things you have to keep in mind when you're doing the design calculations because you always when you use the values you may make errors now apart from that i have to mention here yeah, now you may do the design calculations correctly and you you may write these numbers of equations may correctly or wrongly now you calculate the area correctly but you write different number of bars here that's also kind of issues or error you make during the design and detailing okay let's come to the maximum reinforcement area so you have to substitute the correct value here that is 1180 divided by ac is the cross section area 225 into 450 then it's equal this one this one is correct so 0.31395 anyway this less than 4 so we have not exceed the maximum reinforcement area 
so with that we can conclude the today discussion we spoke about the calculation of the reinforcement for bending in a beam sections or similar kind of section this discussion or this uh, procedure can be applied for any section for designing for bending but not having the axial stress this only we consider on the bending action okay let's meet again from new video thank you very much for watching our videos